Furthermore, because philosophy alone and its knowledge infinite rationality is unable to hear this suffering, the source of this endeavor is found in the lost part of Western spirit, spirit the Jewish wisdom. This wisdom springs both from the history of suffering and from the biblical spirit, which provides a new perspective to think the social and the political. The path this wisdom offers is a rationality that allows thinking from the previous, meaning the other, and not from the autonomy of the conscience that is always in relation to being, that is in relation to intelligibility. The conscience then has to be awakened and faced with its foundation, the non the non quietude or the shaking up of the same by the other. Despite any religious reference possibly seeming irrational to modern ears, and as Levinas, Levinas says, someone could laugh a bit, having the impression that I am delivering a sermon, both Levinas and Metz are convinced that Bible is essential to thinking, and that it is a call to analysis and research with social media. Moving away from this first part, uh, let's consider Levinas and the human fiasco. In spite of the two traditions that have delineated the spirit of Europe, the Greek logos and the inspiration of the Bible, Western thinking has devoted itself to the tradition that seeks for lucidity and comprehension. Levinas wonders if lucidity does not consist precisely in catching sign, sight of the possibility of war. In fact, the events of the 20th century showed the insufficiency of modern intelligence to prevent the catastrophe, and even that it is committed to war and barbarism. Levinas thinking is profoundly marked by, this, by his personal experience of the horror of a system that crushes man, and hence his rejection of totality and his denunciation of ontology, ontology of, as violence inflicted on the other. The entire Western tradition is accused by Levinas of complicity with barbarism. This is so because philosophical humanism centered on the subject freedom and, then, and therefore in ontology, on ontology has finished in egoism and self-sufficiency in human relations, a fragility that revealed in the Hitlerian adventure his most dramatic consequences. Levinas calls human fiasco this historical experience which appears to arise in the extension of a certain exaltation of the same, of the identical, of activity and of being. Philosophically, the human fiasco, according to Levinas, shows an inherent aporia. The human subject feels himself to be the owner of his actions and decisions, defends freedom and rejects any exterior attempt of alienation. Everything in the subject's life has to be assumed and reflected by rational consciousness. Otherwise, the subject could lose his own identity as a free 
and rational being. However, human reality is a constant limitation, a permanent risk of death, violence and war. In fact, a subject who feels himself owner of his acts and therefore identified with itself collides with the reality of the limitedness of being human. To feel the power of control, man sees, seeks to equate will with understanding and therefore to give birth to meaning or significance. In this regard, only what is present before the subject would make sense, either by actual experience or by representable experience. Meaning is then linked to the for me of the subject. In fact, fact human conscience tends to grasp everything from the outside world and in this way subsumes the plural reality into its own consciousness. The final result of this perspective is the absolute thought in which will and understanding coincide in reason. That is, the knowledge of understanding raising itself to reason stretches power to the infinite and with the philosophy of Hegel claiming leave nothing else outside. This is the destiny of philosophy in the West, where the consciousness of the I is the consciousness of the I. In this regard, it is also true that these extreme forms of violence are expression of a tradition that determines the whole Western horizon of history and in this sense it also determines most of the thoughts and behaviors of individuals in their ordinary everyday life. In fact, in the world that has witnessed, witnessed the emergence of psychoanalysis, this human fiasco is experienced in the ambiguity between despair and frivolity. In this sense, the awareness of the limitedness of the human on the one hand and the exaltation of the same on the other lead to a subtle substitution of this limitedness for a frivolous ir irresponsibility. Humans descend into the world of the biblical vanity of vanities when they try to mask their finite reality substituting it for violence and power. To Levinas, the masking of this crisis of meaning leads to a universal irresponsibility in which, as Italian philosopher Orietta Ambrosi points out, no one assumes responsibility for anyone else anymore. The human fiasco is essentially the fiasco of the rationality of the same the rationality stemming from the Greek logos. By seeking lucidity and power, comprehension and knowledge, the Western logos is always a temptation. Temptation into which Christianity and his Greek and his Greek theology have also fallen in trying to create a discourse on God. For Levinas, it is time to try another way to respond to the crisis of Western reason. A way that does not renounce reason, but that, that guarantees a place for the other. A way that, that does not fall into irrationality, nifity, and emotionalism and that continues to be reasonable and philosophically defensible. As stated above, 
Levinas grounds the meaning of the social, of the interhuman relationships, and therefore the meaning of the political in a different rationality. This is a novel rationality, or more ancient than the rationality of the solid earth under the thorn, sun, that is of positivity. Alongside the framework of philosophy, Levinas placed the Bible, which offered a different spirit, the essential message of the Bible, according to Levinas, irresponsible for the other. This is the way that allows reason to be separated from knowledge and in which the voice of the other is heard by the same who feels him or herself responsible for the other before any making free decision. This is the only possible way to ensure a lasting peace and also to do justice to those who suffer and claim justice. The peace is stemming from treatises of peace at the end of war rests on war. In fact, Levinas says, it does not restore to the alienated beings their lost identity. For that, a primordial and original relationship with the being is needed. Uh, let's talk about in this moment um, about met and the second immaturity. In fact, similarly to Kant's happy illiterate who enjoy themselves in their own ignorance and comfort, Met presents a modern subject that faces a second immaturity. Met recalls Kant's invitation to have the courage to use the own understanding without the guidance from another. For Kant, the essential character, character of the enlightened reason is the capacity to think with independence of any authority, and in this way it reaches full maturity. Generally, Kant is confident in the progress of the enlightenment and in the possibility that future generation could continue the evolution towards a final enlightened age. The enlightenment, therefore, hoped to make the subject stronger, meaning more autonomous and illustrated. Nevertheless, for Mets, for Mets the result was a subject that may be described by its lack of sense of reality, impoverishment of language, absence of consciousness of guilt, and particularly rejection of the concept of universal responsibility. In short, a subject weakened in his, its second immaturity. This immaturity has been promoted particularly by the culture of information and entertainment, which causes the process of dissolution of the subject to occur due to pressure and fun, and not by oppression or repression. 